Okay, let's take a look at independent and dependent events. And this is a topic that falls under uh, probability. So if you're new at studying probability, you're probably going to come across uh, these concepts and other concepts uh, like mutually exclusive, etc., which are, you know, students can tend to uh, get this stuff confused. But this is not that difficult. I'm going to explain all this. Before we get going, if you're new to my channel and you're looking for additional math help, I hope you uh, consider becoming a subscriber. If you do, hit that bell notification. I literally have hundreds of videos I'm posting all the time in various topics in mathematics. So if you like my teaching style, you'll find a ton more uh, videos on my channel. Um, additionally, I offer full, complete math courses. I'll leave the link in the description of the video uh, if you're interested in checking those out. But with that being said, let's get into independent and dependent events. So I have two examples here to kind of illustrate uh, this concept. And uh, the big thing with uh, independent and dependent events is the word and. Okay, so both of them ha um, have this word and in them. And I'm going to uh, show you this here in a second. So this first example, I have a little jar here full of marbles, red and blue marbles. This is, we're going to use this example um, to illustrate independent events. And then we'll talk about dependent events by using this deck of cards here. Okay, so I'll get into both of these here in just one second. But let me get back to this word and. So in probability, basic probability, you uh, come across, uh, well, there's a lot of different scenarios, but just from the more basic level, you want to be able to look out for words like and and then words like or. Okay, so for example, What's the probability of uh, rain on Monday and snow on Tuesday? Okay, so that would be an example of where you have the word and in there. Okay, so what's the probability of um, my uh, favorite team winning the Super Bowl uh, in, in football and my favorite team in baseball winning the World Series? Now, uh, likewise, you have the word or. So that might be an example. What's the probability of it uh, raining today or snowing today? Okay, so you have the word or. And the way we approach these are, are different in probability. Okay, now and there's even other scenarios you can kind of just think about in terms of what's the probability of this happening with this occurring and this occurring, etc. So don't you don't want to get too deep into that until you master these fundamentals. But I just want you to know that the word and is kind of a compound event, and independent and dependent events are going to involve this word and uh, in it. So let's take a look at um, in, an independent event example. So I'm going to use some notation. I'm going to kind of assume that you are um, aware of or familiar with some basic probability notation. So if, if you're not, you might want to check out some other videos on my channel, but let's get into this uh, scenario. So let's suppose that you are told that you can select a marble from this jar, okay? So you could just you go in there, you kind of reach in, there's your hand, right? You take in, that's a pretty terrible hand, by the way, but <laughs> let's say you can reach in, you grab one marble out, okay? And then you can, you're going to record this. So it's kind of an experiment. You're going to see what color did you get, and then you're going to throw it back in, all right? You're going to fill the jar back up, okay? So whatever marble you, you took out, you're going to record the color you got. You're going to throw back, throw that back in, and then you're going to repeat the experiment. Okay. So I may want to um, ask or find what's the probability of getting a red and and a blue. Okay. Followed by a blue. Okay. So this would be a scenario of an independent event. Now I very specifically said that you have to replace the marble back in the jar, okay, and then repeat the experiment. So the way this works for independent events is the following, okay? Let's go and just first find the probability of drawing a red. So what's the probability of me getting a red here? All right. So in basic probability, you have one, two, three, four. Okay, we have four red marbles, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight, so let's do it this way. Uh, we have four red, eight blue, 
but we have a total of what? We have a total of 12 marbles, okay? So the probability of me getting a red, okay, would be four out of 12. There's four ways I can get a red marble out of a total of 12. So that's the probability of drawing a red, okay? Now, when I throw that marble back inside and I go again, okay, the probability of me drawing a blue would be what? Well, I have eight ways I can get a blue out of 12, okay? There's eight blue marbles out of 12 total. So in independent events, basically the main concept you have to keep in mind is that when I first, um, or my first trial, my first experiment of going and reaching in, whatever the result is, is has nothing to do, it's not going to affect in any way the second event. And that's the thing that you need to keep uh, in mind, that the events have will not have an effect on one another. Okay, the first event has no bearing on the outcome of the second event or third event, etc. That is the main concept with independent events. Now, of course, you might already figure this out. Dependent events are going to be different. Okay, the second event or the or uh, the follow-on events are influenced by the previous event. But let's just finish up with this example. So the probability of me doing this experiment of first drawing a red and then a blue, okay, uh, would be the, um, is the following. It's the probability of red times the probability of getting a blue, okay? This is an independent event. So all you do is just multiply the probabilities. So in this case, the probability of me getting a red was four twelfths. Okay, and I'm going to multiply by the probability of a uh, me getting a blue on my second trial, which is eight twelfths. Now, remember, these probabilities, because I threw that marble back in and I, I did the experiment again, it's like resetting it. They're independent of one another. So let's just kind of finish this out. So this is one third, right? So if I just reduce this fraction... And this is four goes in this two, four goes in that uh, three. So when I multiply this, I'm going to get two ninths. Okay, so that is the answer, two ninths. Now I can turn that into a decimal and then turn it into a percentage. But basically, the probability of getting a red and a blue. Okay, and, I'm, and when I say and, that means the next trial is going to be a blue is going to be two ninths. All right. That is a simple example of an independent event. But the formula is kind of, when this is kind of uh, formally uh, write it, it's probability of A and B, okay, where A, where the uh, probability or the um, event B, these are two events, okay, where one has no effect on the other is going to be the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, that is the formula for independent events. All right, pretty, but it's very, you know, when you sometimes students see the formula, they're like, oh, they're a little bit confused or intimidated, but it's not that difficult. But the key is when you're doing these probability uh, problems, you really do have to, like, think about it for a second on, um, you know, like, is it independent or is it dependent? So let's go over to a dependent scenario. So this would be like, let's say I have a deck of cards, 52 cards in a deck. And I want to know, what's the probability of me getting a king? And let's, well, let's say I can just take one card out at a time, okay? But this time I'm going to keep the card. So let's say I'm going to take a card, I'm going to select a card from a random deck, right? This is all shuffled up. And I'm going to take a card, and then I'm going to take another card. I'm going to take these two cards, okay? So let's say... I wanted to know, what's the probability of me getting a king and then getting another king? All right. So what would be the probability of that? Now, if you think about it, when I take my first card out, all right, what's the probability of just getting a king on a full, complete uh, deck of 52? Well, it's going to be four out of 52, all right, that's the probability of me getting a king the first time because there's 52 cards in the deck and there's four kings, right? So if you think about the suits, you have hearts, diamonds, uh, spades, um, and oh boy, what am I missing? Uh, whatever else I'm missing, but there's four uh, kings here, right? Uh, 
Now, once I take this first king, if I get that, what's the probability of me getting another king? Now, just think about it in a second, all right? This, for me getting this king, this kind of changed the scenario, all right? Because it, how many kings are left, okay? Well, if I got a, uh, a king the first time out, there's going to be three kings left, all right, out of a deck of what? 51, okay? So there's going to be, you're, you're, you're going to, your second uh, try is going to be, you're going to, you have a three out of 51 chance, okay, of getting a king on your, um, on your second event, okay? So the probability of the uh, first event it affected the probability of a second event. So in other words, your your probabilities are not the same. Okay, the second event is dependent. Okay, or or was impacted by the first event, and that's the main concept with dependent events. So I can go ahead and just calculate this. Right, um, let's get our uh, calculator out just to do the math. So we're going to multiply this, and it's basically the same formula as. Um, uh, dependent, or sorry, ind uh, independent events, but essentially the probability of B is going to be uh, whatever it is. You're going to have to account for how the first event um, influences the second event mainly. Okay, that's the, the whole idea. So when I multiply across, I'm going to get 12 times what 52 times 51. That is going to be 2652. Okay, so if I was to, let's just go ahead and just turn that into a decimal real quick. So 12 divided by 2652 is going to be equal to uh, 0.00452 as a decimal. Now, if I multiply that by 100, I'm going to get a percentage of that. So my percent would be 0.45. 2%, not quite 0.5, right? If it was 0.5%, that's half of a percent chance. So you think about it on a random deck, if I was to get, think about the odds, you know, like how, you know, uh, it's not going to be too common. If you were trying to bet money and you were like saying, okay, I'm going to take one card, I'm going to get a king, and then I'm going to get another king followed right after that, eh, you know, that's kind of, kind of you know, a, a rare event out of 52 to have that kind of scenario. But the main idea here, though, again, is uh, the dependency. The second event is affected by the first event, all right? Whereas in the first example, the first event uh, had nothing, the second event had nothing to do with the outcome of the first event. That's the main thing. But the, uh, the formula is basically the same, right? So probability of A and B, okay, is still probability of A times the probability of B, still the same formula. However, the probability of V, a B, excuse me, is going to be, um, uh, you're going to have to account for how the probability of A affects the, uh, that your outcome, okay, and it will have an effect. So that's the main idea between um, independent and dependent events. Again, you know, in probability, you want to really just kind of look at the big picture when you're starting off outside of basic probability. We start getting into compound probability statements and and then or then you kind of really get into it. So or would be something not not to take this off on a tangent. This would kind of go into things like mutually exclusive, etc. So it's a big, uh, you know, probability is a big um, subject in mathematics. And the whole idea is just to take uh, you know things one at one step at a time, one concept at a time. But hopefully, uh, you, you know you got something out of this video. That's the whole idea. So let's go and wrap it up. Again, if you uh, you know you know kind of connect to my teaching style, I would encourage you to subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell notification. If you are, are interested in my full uh, math courses, I'll leave links to those in the description uh, of this video. Um, hey, if you like the video, wouldn't mind a thumbs up and leave feedback. I do try to read as many of the comments as I get uh, on these things. It lets me know how I'm doing and it gives me ideas on um, how I can better serve you out there. But with that being said, I definitely wish you well and have a great day.